When choosing your IB subjects, one choice can make the difference between getting into medical school and not getting into medical school. Ask me, I made the wrong choices and I'm now paying the price for it, more or less. If you want to check out how I made a mistake and how I made the wrong choices, check out the link in one of the corners that will lead you to the video where I explain my bad decisions. But let's talk about how I could have made the right decisions or more importantly, how you should make the wrong decisions based on my experience since I already made the wrong ones. So the question is, what subject choices can maximize the chance of me or of you or of anybody getting into a good medical school? And there is no real right answer that works for everybody, but there are some choices you can make that will make your life infinitely easier. For example, chemistry higher level, biology higher level, but more of that next. Hi everyone, for everybody that's new to this channel, my name is Emiliano. I did the IB from 2018 to 2020 and I'm now a few months into my gap year. I'm planning on studying medicine abroad, but more on that in another video. Right now we're looking at how to maximize your chance of getting into a good medical school based solely on your IB subject choices. So let's dive in. Right, so before we start, I'm going to be relying heavily on two things. Firstly, it's the fact that you know more or less how the IB works. And if you don't, I encourage you to check out my video on what makes the IB the most difficult school curriculum in the world. I'll leave it in the corner. Secondly, I'm relying on the fact that you're going to apply to medical schools in Europe since the United States has this liberal arts thing going that makes it a bit different. Um, in terms of applications because you have to do four years of undergraduate and then four years in medical school and in Europe you just apply for one program that's six years long and it's six years of medicine instead of four of something and four of medicine like in the US. There's two main parts to this video. Firstly, we're going to look at the superhuman, my second name is Einstein, really tough, challenging and not really applicable to the average IB student kind of subjects. I'm going to spend a short amount of time on that since they're not really applicable for most of IB students or people in general. The second part is more of a doable guide as to what subjects you should be choosing. So getting into the superhuman ones, they're really clear cut and I'm going to be brief because it's, it, it's, it's the ideal and it would be the perfect scenario but it would lead to burnout, distress, and it's, it's just not necessary when there are other paths you can take. So let's crack on with the superhuman subject choices. There would be four higher level and two standard level. The four higher level would be chemistry, biology, maths, analysis and application, or, or AA, and psychology. And standard level English, assuming that's your native language. And then for the language acquisitions group, I would choose a completely new subject that you're very interested in learning. So for example, for me, it might have been French, right? Or German, which is what I actually chose. I didn't choose these superhuman subjects, right? So why, why are these the superhuman choices? Well, firstly, because chemistry is the hardest science in the IB. Well, chemistry higher level is the hardest science in the IB. And maths, AA, higher level, is the hardest math in the IB. So taking two of the hardest subjects in the IB coupled with two other higher levels isn't really doable, sustainable, and could lead to a lot of burnout, stress that you really don't want in high school when you should be focusing on having a balanced life, balanced social life, etc. right? It's not really your priority to burn out in high school or anything like that. You want to be balanced and work as well as you can without overexerting yourself. So let's move on to the more doable or average uh, subject choices. Now I'm gonna take my time with these because um, I think it, there's more value in me going in depth than just speeding through them. Given that medicine is a scientific field, it makes sense that the group four subjects are gonna be the most important and that you should mold your choices around these. For example, in my school, you can take both business management and economics at the same time. So you should choose the group four subjects first and then mold your the rest of your subject choices around them as to accommodate them 
and not the other way around. So these two group four subjects are gonna be the most important ones, the ones you're gonna need the best grades in, and if necessary, the ones that you're gonna ask your teachers uh, for letters of recommendation. So make sure that you're putting in all the work, all the effort, really trying your best, not only to succeed in the subjects, but also to form some sort of healthy relationship or bond with that teacher so you can ask for help in the future if you need it. And in order of importance, these two subjects are chemistry higher level and biology higher level. Now, chemistry higher level is the most difficult science and maybe even subject besides math in the IB. So it's gonna take a lot of focusing, skill, discipline, motivation, all of it to perform the best as you can. So assuming you've stuck with both bio and chem higher level, that's two of the three higher levels and five of the six subjects taken care of. So what's next? The next higher level subject I would recommend a normal person to take is psychology higher level. Because it relates to human body, mind and health overall, I think it would make you stand out in your application. But this may not always be accessible. For example, in my school, it was only offered as an online course with online teachers and in like a, on a website, which I don't think I could have worked with, so I didn't take it. If that's the case, remember it's not worth it to sacrifice points over subjects because no good university is going to look at you for medical for a medical program if you have 25 or 26 points in the IB. It's better to have some good subjects and some so-so subjects than have the best subjects but the worst grades, okay? So if you can't take uh, psychology, higher level, what should you take? Personally, I would stick with a language because they're not as hard and they can of course help because you're gonna be of course communicating a lot in, in medicine and with patients, etc. So I think it, it can be good to, to take a language at a higher level. I'm gonna stick with literature over uh, language and literature because I love the course and it was my favorite subject apart from biology. So right now we have higher level biology, chemistry, and either psychology or English literature and no standard levels, but that's already 50% of our subjects chosen. Let's see what's next. So the first SL we're gonna choose is the humanity. I'm assuming right now you have a higher level of chemistry, biology, and English, right? So we still have a humanity left to pick. Um, if your school offers history, business management, economics, and psychology, I would choose psychology standard level if you know you're not gonna be sacrificing your grades to get that um, subject on your, on your diploma. If you don't think you can manage with an online course, so to speak, I would discard history since it's a lot of memorization and um, dates and all that, and it really conflicts with biology because it's also a lot of mem memorization in biology. Um, so assuming you're not taking either history or psychology, you're stuck between economics and business management. So the choice between econ and business management is really up to you. It won't really impact how a university, a medical school looks at you. Um, unless of course you have a four in one and a seven in the other, right? So again, don't sacrifice your grades for something that might look a bit more interesting. You never know. So if, if you're absolute trash at econ, but great at business management, do yourself a favor, take the one you're good at. If say you're just magically good at both, know that econ is more maths and analysis and business management is more knowledge and uh, memory and retention. So that's up to you, whatever suits you best or whatever is more interesting, um, it won't really affect your application. For the second out of three standard level subjects, let's look at the math group. Now there's two types of maths, analysis and approaches, or analysis and interpretation. And although they might be very similar, there are some things that might tilt the balance one way or the other for you specifically. So maths AA is seen as more competitive as it might be seen as harder since it's a bit more theoretical. Right? So that'll make you stand out a bit more in your application. However, 
Maths AI is more applicable to what you're going to be doing and studying once you're in medical school. So in this fight or decision between competitivity and applicability, it really is up to you. If you think you can manage the competitive math, so AA, without sacrificing your grades or your mental health to achieve a good grades in math AA, I would go for it. If you don't think so, I would very comfortably and confidently go to Maths AI since you're not really sacrificing anything and you might even be more um, tranquil and com comfortable with your choice. If you're not taking psychology, I would lean towards Maths AA. But if you are, I would 100% recommend Maths AI because you don't want to stress yourself too much or take too much on your plate and then not be able to manage when you're 18 or 12 months already into the program. For this last standard level subject, it's actually the easiest choice because what we're left with is language acquisitions. Now this is really simple. If you want to get into medical school, I would choose a subject that is going to be an easy seven, so to speak. So choose a language you already know or are already familiar with. So for example, in my case, I know English and Spanish. If I had wanted an easy seven or to boost my grade, I, I could have taken Italian or French since they both come from the same roots. If you're German, take Dutch. If you're Dutch or speak Dutch, take German. It really isn't that hard. Um, if the languages are similar or you already have some sort of knowledge when it comes to that language. Make life easy on you and don't go for the hardest language. So for example, if I had taken Chinese, which I know nothing about, it would have been really hard for me. By making this subject an easy seven, you're not only making your life easier on yourself, you're boosting your chances of getting into a good university if you can get your uh, average or your final score up a bit, right? So a higher score will make it more likely for you to get into a university. However, you should know that some universities also require certain scores from certain subjects. So some universities in the UK might ask you not only for 38 points as a total, but also for a six in chemistry higher level and a six in biology higher level. So while it is important to boost your grade with easy subjects like languages you might already be familiar with, it's also important to really focus and put all your effort and energy into achieving good grades into the most important subjects, which I reiterate are chemistry and biology higher level. So that's all for this week. If this was helpful, hit the like. And if you want to know how I aced the extended essay or how I finished cast early with over 180 reflections, make sure to hit the like, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned because those videos will be coming out soon.